hello you're welcome so we are gonna continue from where we stop newton third law okay so what's newton third law of motion all right so newton's third law of motion state that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction all right for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction okay now this means that when you impart a force on a body it we it actually causes it to react okay to your force with an equal and opposite force so for example if i should have a surface okay this let's say this is a surface now if i should actually place a weight on this surface the weight of this object okay that have placed on this surface will actually um impart on the surface a force because of course you know weight is a force okay so now and every weight weight always acts downward weight acts downward so for this surface to be able to withstand the weight of this object all right the surface have to react okay with an opposite force so in the case where you have this weight acting downward let's say the weight uh let me use w to represent the weight okay according to newton because of this force acting downward then the surface will have to react with an opposite force okay equal and opposite force upward so the one downward is what is called action all right the weight is the action why the okay the reaction that the surface gives okay or the force opposite force that the surface gives to withstand the weight of this object is what is known as reaction so invariably now we can simply say that according to newton all right action is equal to equal and opposite to reaction so that means action is minus reaction so please take note of that for every action there's equal and opposite reaction okay so let's proceed now this Newton's law okay Newton's third law is a law that that actually describe the law of conservation okay law of conservation of linear momentum so it is from newton third law that we actually get to learn the law of conservation of linear momentum so what does the law state the law of conservation of linear momentum okay now according to the law of conservation of linear momentum it said that the total momentum before and after collision is always constant the total momentum before and after collision is always constant so if uh, an object collide with another object the total momentum that you will evaluate before the collision okay and the one that you are going to evaluate after the collision have actually taken place is always constant so for me to actually simplify that simply means that momentum okay for the law of conservation for uh momentum to be conserved according to the law of conservation of momentum okay momentum before collision okay, should always be equal to the momentum after the collision momentum before the collision is always equal to momentum after the collision so it simply means that if you have two objects okay uh, let me just use a ball a simple ball okay this will have a ball like a snooker game another ball okay now this ball actually comes 
moving with a momentum okay let's say it's moving faster than this other ball or also i can say that the second ball is at rest okay now this ball has a momentum so once it collide with this other ball the total momentum that i will calculate the sum of the momentum of the first ball and the second ball before they even collide okay should be equal to their total momentum after the collision that is what the law of uh, conservation of linear momentum make us to understand so now the question is uh, how do we relate this to collision now to relate this to collision of course we should learn uh, the two types of collision so types of collision okay now collision is of two types okay we have inelastic collision and of course we will also study elastic collision now these two type of collision actually obeys the law of conservation of linear momentum right whether the collision is inelastic or the collision is elastic so of course we are going to start with an uh, inelastic collision i'm very sure that you the word elastic okay is very familiar when I know, when something is elastic simply means that when it is being stretched or when it is being displaced it will still return back from the original position okay so in elastic collision that's what you're going to be looking at now all right so now what makes inelastic collision different from elastic in inelastic collision okay after the collision of the two let's say the two bodies the, let's say we have two bodies actually colliding after their collision two of them will move in the same direction with a common velocity so in inelastic collision after the colliding bodies okay uh collides after the two bodies actually collides they move in the same direction with the common velocity so let's i have two masses okay from what you see me drawing here i have two mass mass m1 and mass m2 and they are they are actually gonna collide okay let's say mass m1 is has an initial velocity of u1 and mass m2 has an initial velocity of u2 okay so invariably remember momentum is always mass times uh, velocity so that means the initial momentum of m1 is going to be m1 u1 okay then plus the initial velocity of m2 is m2 u2 so because this elastic this collision is inelastic after they collide okay now this is let's say i draw what happened after their collision after they collide the two body will actually stick together because the collision is inelastic okay they will stick together and actually move with a common velocity so that means m1 we actually uh join with m2 then at the end of the day they will now move not with different velocity now they move with a common final velocity v so that means after the collision i'm gonna have the momentum now being equal to m1 plus m2 then multiply by the common final velocity so as you can see according to the law of conservation of momentum this is the initial momentum okay and this is the final momentum they are equal so that means momentum have been conserved okay so in an elastic collision momentum was actually conserved so please take note of that in an elastic collision momentum momentum is conserved but kinetic energy is not conserved kinetic energy
is not conserved. Why is kinetic energy not conserved? Because if you look at it critically, the kinetic energy of the system actually somewhat um, of the system, okay, is different from both sides of the equation. The kinetic energy before the collision is not equal to the kinetic energy after the collision. But the momentum before the collision is equal to the momentum after the collision. Okay? So please take note of that. Now, let's look at some typical examples, some question that is based on inelastic collision. All right? So I'm going to get some example. <coughs> so I have a question here. So I'll come maximize this. Okay, so it goes this way. A body of mass 12 kg traveling at 4 meter per second. So this body, let me call it M1, the first body here is 12 kg. So that means and that body travels with initial velocity of uh, 4 meter per second. All right, so let's proceed. Four meter per second. Collide with a second body of mass, 18 kg at rest. So here comes another second body, M2. And the mass of that second body is 18 kg. And we are told that 18 kg is at rest. The initial velocity of every object at rest, okay, is always equal to zero. So what's our question now? So the question, calculate their common velocity if the two bodies collide after collision. So you now know that this is inelastic collision. So their final velocity is what we're looking for. So applying the formula for inelastic collision, M1, U1, plus M2, U2, <clears throat> is equal to bracket open, M1 plus M2, then multiply by velocity. M1 is 12, U1 is 4, M2 is 18, U2 at rest is 0, is equal to bracket open 12 plus 18. Then multiply by V. Adding up 12 times 4. That should give me. <clears throat> that should be 50, 50, 54. Let me not stress my brain. 56, okay? That should be 56. But let me do that. Okay, 48. Pardon me. So I'm having 48 here. Then plus zero equal to this is 30 30 V. So that means V now is going to be equal to 48 divided by 30. So let's do that 48. Divided by 30. That gives me 1.6. All right. And uh, that should be in meter per seconds. All right. So this is Newton. This is inelastic collision in Newton second law. Okay. So we are going to look at um, uh, the elastic collision. Okay. And I will do that in the next video. All right, see you in the next video. Thank you.